Folks, Monday, we had an exclusive story on uh, a black teen uh, who wore her afro in a beauty pageant in Louisiana. Uh, Talia Cockburn uh, was a contestant uh, in the beauty pageant. And one of the three judges said that Talia's natural afro, quote, was not finished. Here's what the judge, here's what Judge 3 said about Talia. Slow down, finish hair, pretty color dress. Well, one of the judges, who was judge number two, the black one and the only black judge, her name is Stacy Simeon Dickens. She saw our story on YouTube and posted this comment on our YouTube channel. Hi, I was one of the judges at the pageant in, L in L.A. I just saw the video interview of I, I am also the current president of the Louisiana Pageant Judges Association, and this was not a race issue. There is an expectation of grooming, among other things, in pageants. Her sister competed and was more groomed than she and she placed. It's not about her the child was not put together as a whole. Please don't make this a race issue because we have plenty of things that are racial issues that need highlighting here in Louisiana, but this is not one of them. Uh, she said uh, it looked. Uh, let's see here. Uh, it, she said it looked like I got to switch uh, iPads here because one of them uh, just died uh, on me. Um, she said uh, here. Um, uh, give me one second, y'all. Uh, she said it looked like she had been mistreated, but it's partially her family to blame for putting her up there and not having her completely put together to compete in that type of pageant. Now, y'all keep in mind. The mother and the father said that their younger daughter actually had her hair different. She curled it. It was different. So to say that, well, one was finished. So check this out. It's, it's pretty interesting. So my producer reached out to Stacy Simeon Dickens and invited her on the show to explain her comments. But Stacy declined. But she did send this statement. I do not wish to be on the show. My career as an assistant principal won't allow it. However, I would like to make a statement. First, I am a black woman and I am the president of the Louisiana Pageant Judges Association and our judges bring a certain level of expertise as judges to each pageant. At each pageant, there are association judges as well as what we would call pageant experienced judges who the pageant directors use their discretion to choose. And that particular judge was, is not a part of this judges association. So does not have the same level of training as someone in our organization. I would like to apologize uh, that this contestant was hurt by the judge's comments, but look, would like them to understand that there was no feelings of or prejudice or racism involved in the judge's comments as judges association or not. Uh, we believe that, it is in the best interest of the contestant if we provide constructive criticism to help our contestants better stand out. The judge, being naive, assumed that she had not finished her hair because in this culture of pageants, most young ladies, as the contestant stated herself, wear extensions, both white and black girls. I do feel that this incident highlights the need to further the discussion of diversity and ethnicity in our world of pageantry so that future judges will not make the same mistake or assumption that our natural hair is not considered groomed. As a black judge and former title winner of several Louisiana fair and festival pageants, I've seen other black contestants wear their natural hair and it was groomed and styled to glorify our culture. The contestant is a beautiful young lady and I encourage her to continue to compete as her most authentic self in a way that she feels proud in herself and our black heritage. Stacey Simeon is an assistant professor at Jefferson at a Jefferson Davis Parish Elementary School. So Monique, um, so I'm sorry, I said sister, but sister principal. Um, <laughs> boy, quite the contrast uh, of statements there. Well, I didn't think they were inconsistent. No, I, I think I think so. One, one. Uh, for, first of all, I believe her first response was the immediate emotional one to see in the video, uh, and then the second one is the more okay. This is gonna be my public comment. 
Uh, but 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 uh, the, but the whole deal here, and see see this is the thing that I must when she says, well, you know, the judge was naive, but it's not racist. See, and this is the thing that I keep telling people when we talk about this issue of race. I'm racist, not racist. Is issue is not racist, not racist. It's all those things in between that 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 impact here. So to say, well, nah, that judge didn't quite know. Uh, but it but it does goes to show when you have someone who is white, who is unaware of culture, how they bring their biases to the table, which has an impact on that particular young lady. And in talking with her parents and her on Monday, they said she's placed in all in numerous pageants. But the moment she decided to wear her hair natural, all of a sudden she stopped winning. Or stop placing, I'm sorry. Yeah, um, you know, <laughs> Roland, we could have this panel of um, my mama, my my aunts, and uh, two of my cousins, and I won't name anybody's names. And if they were judging a pageant because they all come out of that pageant world, um, they would have said that and some more stuff because it is a culture. And it hasn't moved forward as as maybe it should in acceptance of it, um, of the fact that we don't have to have extensions down our back and and um, pretend to be something or someone that we're not or buy into um, ways of of adapting Caucasian uh, mannerisms and culture in order to succeed. I think this judge uh, was saying I didn't score her well either. And in the first statement, she said that she felt overall the contestant could have been more put together, that more time was sp spent on the sister. And then probably knowing, oops, I shouldn't have put my whole name out there. Then she had to come up with another statement because here we are sending her name out into the universe. Um, <laughs> and so I, I do know that there. Well, are I mean, if you, if, when, the moment you comment on the public, man, the moment the moment you comment on the public yeah. YouTube channel, you're going to be in the public. Yes, and and I'm and I'm sure she probably wanted to quit, to 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 pull that back, um, but I only say that to say that whether it is the other Monique, um, or whether it is my mama and them, there are lots of people who are not white, not lacking education and culture, uh, and and not being racist, who believe that even if you wear afro, the afro needs to be quaffed. And 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 kept well and not the way my daughter sometimes likes to leave school and says that the parts that are sticking out make it legitimate, you know, like it's part of her personality. I wasn't raised like that because I'm Southern, very. Um, so I, I live in that battle in my home and I do. She 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 goes and does it. She's she's her own person. Um, but I I do frequently say, can't we go to Miss Aisha this weekend and get you a blowout just to make me happy. Uh, so that's my transparency for the evening. But I do wish the young lady well. And I wish the assistant principal who dared to write a lengthy statement. I wish her well, too. Y'all y'all be easy on her as well. Thank you. No. I love black women. Uh, Larry, go ahead. Black women for the win. Yes. Yeah, so so this is this is this okay. is uh, well, bottom I mean, line is, I mean, look, she, if, if she if she deserves criticism, she going to get criticism. What 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 I say on this show? If you do good, I'll talk about you. If you do bad, I'll talk about you. Then they'll talk about you. Right. No, that ain't got nothing to do with being a black bad. woman. Larry, go ahead. Let Larry go ahead. Uniquely capable of talking. Hold on, about hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Larry, go ahead. Yeah, Roland. I think I think we got to talk. We have to talk about anti-blackness, particularly not only in terms of how white people view black aesthetic hair, et cetera, but also in terms of the black community. Monique, Monique highlighted a good point. Thought about my grandmother, some other members of my family. But we really do have to have a conversation about how black people internalize, how our, our natural hair, our noses, et cetera. Um, but like I said, and also pageants, not just pageants, but corporate America are more focused on Eurocentric, you know, um, you know, hair, et cetera, and not appreciating natural African, you know, in terms of people of African descent, in terms of our, the texture of our hair. But this is an ongoing issue 
not only in terms, like I say, pageants, but this is an issue and a challenge that Monique highlighted within the black community. But like I said, as a researcher who writes about racism, I call it for what it is, and that's anti-blackness. I also want to highlight that there are the two different the statements, in my opinion, are two are distinctly different. She posted how she really felt. And then after she thought about it or heard some feedback from people that she knows, particularly maybe her school district, then she thought about it and realized that that the statement that she had initially posted was anti-black. And so I think it's important to have these conversations. We talk about you talk about the Crown Act uh, role in terms of fight nationally to get it passed uh, by members of the CDC, et cetera. But this is an ongoing problem that black folks, particularly black women. Uh, have encountered as when it comes to the natural texture of their hair and what is viewed as being um, acceptable in in, in a European society. Uh, Robert, I think Larry makes a great point there. The reality is whether we want to accept it or not, uh, in many ways, uh, we take on, um, you know, this view in terms of how how white folks also uh, uh, view us, things along those lines. We, We take that on. Uh, and so, uh, look, I mean, I, hell, I had black, I had black folks who, or who, some would tweet me who were upset. Uh, uh, how dare you wear that, uh, that African outfit on MSNBC? And I was like, first of all, you can kiss my ass, you know, but, but we do have to recognize that we also have some self hate in terms of how we view things and we have accepted European standards. We have. Well, oh, absolutely. And I think you see this throughout the uh, decolonized world. You know, you can go to Vietnam right now and get a delicious croissant uh, because of colonization. You can go to the Caribbean right now and see people still wearing uh, colonial style clothing. But just for a second, I'm going to go pull my soapbox out from under the desk and stand on it. All pageants should be banned. Pageants are by their very nature child abuse. You would absolutely never do this to little boys. Hey, uh, Timmy or Todd or whoever, put on this outfit, go out there and look good for the people. Smile, arch your back, and walk around so people can judge you. That's a ridiculous thing to do. These pageants started as ways for royals to parade their teenage and preteen daughters out for older, wealthy men to pick among them to decide who will be their child bride. It's very much a disgusting situation. Uh, one of my favorite movies is Truck Turner, you know, R.I.P. to Nichelle Nichols, but she played a pimpstress named uh, uh, named Dorinda. And in the movie, she brings her girls out in order to pay the bounty uh, for the death of Gator to Truck Turner, and they uh, the girls go out and they shake it and they get judged by the people. That's the exact same thing as the beauty pa- uh, pageants. So if you are thinking about entering your child into one of these pageants, don't. It's a bad idea. It is a terrible thing that you are doing. These things should be outlawed. And I hope that at some point in the very near future, we stop simply parading young girls out to judge them by their looks and nothing about their character, nothing about their intellect, and then breaking their self-esteem and spirit going forward because some random judge at a county fair in Louisiana didn't like her hair, and that now becomes a national, national story. Let's make sure that this young girl who's the center of this controversy is being properly supported, being properly loved, being properly given the help that she needs to get through this. Because guess what? When she goes to school and people are talking about this is a national story, her hair being uh, ungroomed or nappy or whatever else, that can hurt a young girl's self-esteem. And we need to stop this as a society. And I'll put the soapbox back into the desk. That was excellent. <laughs> and with that, that was excellent. Uh, um, Monique, you commenting? I was saying that was excellent, Robert. Thank you. All right, folks, back to our Mark Unfiltered video in just one moment. When we invest in ourselves, our glow, our vision, our vibe, we all shine. Together, we are black beyond measure. Folks, Black Star Network is here. Hold no punches. A real uh, revolutionary right now. <laughs> Support this man, Black Media. He makes sure that our stories are told. Thank you for being the voice of Black America, Roller. I love y'all. All momentum we have now, we have to keep this going. The video looks phenomenal. See, this difference between Black Star Network and Black-owned media and something like CNN. You can't be Black-owned media and be scared. It's time to be smart. Bring your eyeballs home. You dig? 